Hello everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn, Way of Spears, and the very soon to be released Song of the Dryad. Today we are going to be discussing the pros and cons of self-publishing. Now I believe that either route to publication, whether you go self-publishing, indie publishing, traditional publishing, whatever you want to call all of them, as long as you are publishing and you are moving towards your dreams, I think you are definitely on the right track. But depending on the person that you are and the type of books that you're writing and what you hope to achieve with your writing, there are certainly pros and cons to each different style of publishing. I personally have never been traditionally published, so today I'm going to be discussing the pros and cons of self-publishing. Let's get started. major con when it comes to self-publishing is that it is expensive. And it doesn't have to be. I'm going to kind of preface with saying self-publishing does not have to be expensive. It really depends on the type of self-publishing you're going for. If, like me, you are trying to make your product as professional as possible, I'm almost trying to make it, I guess I, I would say that I am trying to make it mimic traditionally produced novels, then it is going to be expensive. So far, I have set up um, a business. So I registered a business and have my own publishing house. That costs money. I paid for an editor, I paid for a cover designer, I paid for an interior designer, and I will be going over all of those kind of costs and what you can expect if you go this method to self-publishing, but it can absolutely be super expensive. However, let's say you're just publishing a book for yourself or for your close family and friends, maybe some sort of like family history that you want to give out at Christmas time. That does not have to be super expensive. You don't need an editor. You don't need some fancy pants cover designer unless you want one. So the amount of money that you put into self-publishing is completely up to you. But if you're trying to go the super shiny professional route, it can definitely be expensive. Con number two when it comes to self-publishing is that you have to do all the work. Now, there's definitely work to be put in, whether you do self-publishing or traditionally publishing, you have to write the darn book, unless you want to pay a ghost writer, then it's still going to be expensive. But there is just so much to be done. And when it comes to traditional publication, yes, there's a lot of work that you have to do, but you have a team behind you. You have an agent, you have an editor, you have your publishing house, you have the designers, you have the publicity team, you have all these people behind you kind of ushering you along, you know, showing you the way, kind of guiding you into this unknown territory if you're a debut author. And when you are a self-published author, you don't necessarily have that. However, with the like blossoming of AuthorTube and all of these amazing creators sharing what we all know on platforms such as YouTube, you certainly have more of a community behind you and a community that can answer your questions and guide you, but that did not used to be the case. I feel like self-publishing used to be a pretty like mysterious territory. When I first started, there were a couple creators that were making videos about it, but nothing like it is today. Today, you can find answers for almost any of your self-publishing questions right here on YouTube. So you have more of a community now than people used to have when we were self-publishing years ago, which is fantastic. But again, you're not going to have that professional team of people that is like assigned to you and lots of other books, let's be honest, but that team of people that is assigned to you to guide you through the process. So you have to be ready to kind of wade into unknown waters and start figuring it out on your own. But as long as you're okay with that, self-pub might be for you. Third con when it comes to self-publishing, and this is a little bit of a tricky one, you could even call it a little bit controversial, is the doubt that might come with being a self-published author. And this is something that can absolutely happen to traditionally published authors as well. I think they call it imposter syndrome, where you feel like you're not really living up to what you're supposed to be or this person that you've kind of made yourself out to be. I've never felt that way personally, but I have absolutely felt the doubt and the insecurity that goes into self-pub. For many, many years, self-publication has almost had this stigma of having very low quality, you know, poor content. And I think that there's a reason for that. It's extremely easy to write a first draft, put a cover on it, and 
publish it. So those types of novels are kind of giving self-publishing a bad reputation, but at the same time there are some amazingly well-developed and well-thought-out novels out there that you can buy that are completely self-published. They have amazing storylines and they are just as good as all of the traditionally published novels. And also, many times, unless you are like a super book lover, people will know the names of the books that they really enjoy and the names of the authors that wrote their books, but they won't necessarily know who published those books. Like, for example, I know that Lainey Taylor wrote Strange the Dreamer, but I don't necessarily know who published her, because to me it doesn't matter. I love Lainey Taylor, I love her stories, and that will always be an automatic buy for me, so the publisher doesn't matter. But still, there is that stigma with self-publishing. I certainly think it's getting better as the like quality of content continues to climb, and I'm going to talk about this in a different video and why I think that self-publishing content is getting so much better. That will be coming later on. But there is still that like insecurity in telling people, oh, you know, my book is coming out in, you know, June. And then they say, oh, great, you know, who's publishing it? And you're like, oh, it's self-published. I definitely used to feel that way when I used to tell people about my books. Like I felt insecure for saying I was self-publishing as if I wasn't good enough to be traditionally published but I chose not to pursue that path, especially Hewer Song of the Dryad. I kind of started out, I dipped my toes into the water of traditional publishing, and then I decided, nope, it's not for me, at least with Song of the Dryad, I wanted to self-publish. And just yesterday, I actually had a woman ask me about my book. She asked me about the plot, and I was super excited that I kind of had an elevator pitch, elevator pitch? I had an elevator pitch ready for her. I was able to pitch my novel, and then when she asked who was publishing it, I told her with utmost confidence that I have my own small publishing house and that I will be publishing it on my own. And I think a lot of that just comes from my own personal confidence. Nobody like gave me the stamp of approval to say, okay, your books are good enough for you to be proud of now. It's just something that I've developed on my own. So as long as you have the confidence and the pride in your work, everybody else is going to have that confidence and pride in your work as well. You know, if you approach something like, oh, I'm no good, I'm self-published, then people are going to think that of you. But if you approach it like, yes, I am a businesswoman and I am self-publishing my novels because it is my choice, people are gonna respect that. So just remember that. All right, and the fourth con that this is probably something that a lot of people might think about when it comes to self-publishing, and that is limited print distribution. And you can absolutely 100% get your self-published books into bookstores. I had Way of Spears in a like a relatively large local bookstore and it was incredibly amazing. I like have a vlog of going to the bookstore and seeing my book on shelves and it didn't do very well there and I think I know why and I can definitely make a video about how I got my book into the bookstores and why I think that it didn't succeed in the bookstores very well. But when it comes to traditionally published books, it's very easy for them to end up on the shelves at Barnes & Noble when it comes to a self-published or indie published book. That is not always the case. However, with distributors like Ingram Spark, libraries and booksellers can buy directly from them if their readers want it. And I think that's really important. I have seen a bunch of like Jenna Moresi's book, The Savior's Champion. I have seen so many photos of this book in libraries because people are requesting it. They want it on the shelves and they want to be able to read it. So that's where it comes from. If you have an audience that wants to see your book in stores or wants to see your book on the shelves at the library, then that is what the booksellers are going to give them. Booksellers want people to buy the books and to be happy with what's on their shelves. So while it is more difficult to get your print books into like brick and mortar bookstores, it is not impossible. It is just significantly easier for the traditionally published authors. Okay, so those were my four like major cons with self-publishing. I'm sure that you guys can all think of your own and you know, depending on what you are hoping to get out of the publishing process, there will be different pros and cons for you. But those are my top four. And now we are going to move into my pros. So this is the really exciting part of the video. I have some tea here that I would really like to drink out of my cute little owl mug, but it is so hot. Okay, so the first 
pro when it comes to self-publishing is something that was extremely important to me, and that is control. I like to control everything about everything. It's one of the reasons that I have my own businesses and that nobody tells me what to do, because I freaking hate that. So when it comes to self-publishing, you control every single step of the way. A fear that many writers have is that they're going to write this amazing book and that a traditional publisher is going to put an absolutely horrendous uh, cover on it. And I've absolutely seen this happen. Um, if you know about the like Throne of Glass novels by Sarah J Maas, the first version of Throne of Glass that came out, like that cover, I'll pop it up over here, not good. Not good looking at all, and I would never pick that up in a store because I really don't like that style. But the new and updated one that came out looks like this, and this is so much better, and now the entire series looks like this, and it is an incredibly attractive book buy. Like, that is a book that I would just buy to display on my shelf because it's so beautiful. So no writer wants the traditional publisher to smack an ugly cover on their amazing book. But as a self-published author, you get to control that. You also get to control, you know, the day that it comes out, the release date. You get to control the content that goes into it. You get to control the price of the book. You are the puppet master of everything that goes into the creation of this novel. And while that can feel like a lot of responsibility maybe, maybe it's like a burden on your shoulders to have to have your hands in everything. For somebody that likes control and likes to be a part of every single part of the process, that is, this is a huge pro for me. It is a huge positive and one of the reasons that I chose to self-publish. The second pro to self-publishing is one that is close to my heart and that is that there are no gatekeepers to keep you out or to tell you no. With traditional publishing, you have to get through the gates, I guess you could say. First, an agent has to be interested in you, so you have to get through that gate, and then an editor has to be interested in you, and then you have to get through that gate, and then the publishing house that the editor works for has to be interested in you, so you have to get through that gate, and there are just so many steps of the process that you have to get through just for somebody to say, okay, we're going to you know, publish this three years from now. And when it comes to self-publishing, there is nobody there to tell you no. And while this has had, you know, I want to say it's had a little bit of a negative effect on the self-publishing world just because, you know, those books that haven't really been well developed have slipped through. It's also a huge bonus and a positive for many of us because those of us that don't want to jump over those traditional publishing hurdles can get our books out there without feeling like the door is slammed in our face. Um, you know, I feel like there are so many writers that feel like they can never be successful because they don't think an agent will ever want their book or, you know, oh, I could never get through the querying stage or I could never get through, you know, the submission stage with my agent. But with self-publishing, none of that matters. You are the only one that matters and you are the one that can make or break your own novel. All right, pro number three when it comes to book sales is that money. Because when you are self-publishing, you get more money for each book. I don't know the exact figures when it comes to like royalties that you make off of traditionally published books. I've heard that it's somewhere around 5%. I don't know for certain. There are absolutely other author tubers and creators that you can look to for accurate information, so don't quote me there, but it is relatively low. And the way I understand it is when you get a traditional book deal, you're going to get advances. So they're going to pay you money. But then when your book comes out, you're not getting paid for all those book sales until you earn back the money that you've already been paid. And some authors don't even pay out. Like they don't even sell enough books to get any more money on top of those advances. Now, when it comes to self-publishing, you control your royalties. I am going to be using Ingram Spark, and I'm not sure how their royalties work just yet, but when I was with CreateSpace, I could decide an either 35% or a 70% royalty per book is amazing. So if you sell a book for 10 bucks, you're making approximately $7 off of it versus making 5% off of it, which would be 50 cents. So when it comes to royalties, there is certainly much more to be earned with self-publishing than traditional publishing. But again, I do feel like this is all dependent on the author that you are. For example, if I was traditionally published, I would certainly 
be making way less money than Lainey Taylor because she is such like an acclaimed and celebrated author, right? So those royalty rates are gonna be different. The advances are going to be different. So I can't tell you like, okay, here's the formula to use to figure out how much money you would get because there isn't really something like that out there. It's different for everybody, but but baseline is that with self-publishing, you can control the royalties that you wanna make and you can typically get higher royalties per book. All right, pro number four, also extremely important to me and many other self-published authors, and that is that you can publish much faster and much more efficiently. If you are querying right now, or you know, if you are going to query in the future, what might happen is you know, an agent gets interested in you and then you have to go through you know, more time making sure that they wanna work with you and then maybe they offer you representation and then maybe you have to edit for a month or more and then you have to go on submission to editors and who knows how long that could take. And then by the time you jump through all of those hurdles and your book has finally been like sold to a publishing house, it could take years before you see it on the shelf. But personally for myself, I decided like middle toward, between the middle of May to the end of May of this past year, 2018, I decided I was going to self-publish my novel and my novel will be out this year. So May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So that's like a seven month window from me deciding, yes, I am going to publish it to the time when I could potentially be publishing it. I haven't set a release date yet, so that's why I'm being like weird and mysterious and cryptic about the months and such. But the point is, let's say you decide in March that you want to publish your novel yourself. It could be out by summer or fall of that year, rather than having to wait, you know, one and a half to two years or even more in some cases for traditional publishing. Pro number five with self-publishing is that you own the rights to your work. You have not sold your rights to a publishing house. And this is something that I was aware of for a long time. I have heard horror stories of authors selling their rights to a publishing house and then that publishing house either deciding that they're not interested and they're not actually going to move forward with that book or there was one I heard about and I don't remember if I've mentioned it before in a video, I probably have. Uh, this woman wrote a book and I absolutely loved it and then I went to find her second book and it never came out because she sold the rights to a publishing house that then like went bankrupt and had to close and she was locked in legal battles trying to buy back the rights to her own creative work because once you sell them, those rights to publish that story in depending, you know, many different forms, depending on the contract that you signed and the rights you signed, if you signed movie rights, audiobook rights, foreign rights, etc. If you have sold all of those and something happens to that publishing house, you are going to be locked in a whirlwind of legal battles trying to buy them back. So yuck, not something I was interested in. So definitely a pro when it comes to self-publishing. You own everything. All right, pro number six when it comes to self-publishing is that you can write in a niche. You can write extremely, um, like, what's the word that I'm looking for? You can write work that targets a very small and specific audience, and you can publish your work just for that audience. And when you're looking into traditional publishing, they typically don't want to publish within a niche market because there's not that wide audience and they do not typically want to take a chance on a book that might not sell well, right? Traditional publishing, yes, it's all about books and sharing stories, but it's also about money. They want to make money off of these book sales. So they don't want to publish in a niche marketplace with a small audience that might not do very well for them. But if you are self-publishing, then those are your people. That audience is your audience and you can market directly to them. You can make sure that your book ends up in their hands and it is completely worth it, right? The traditional publisher though, they're not gonna be very interested in that niche, small audience type work. All right, pro number seven, there we go. Pro number seven to self-publishing is that you don't have any restrictive contracts. Now, again, I have never traditionally published, so I have never like physically signed a traditional publication contract, so I can't tell you exactly what's on it. 
but based on the traditionally published authors that I have talked to and the research that I have done, these contracts can be extremely limiting. They might limit the types of books that you can write. They might tell you that you can only attend certain events as an author. You might not be able to do what you want with your book. You know, maybe you can't do that cover reveal when you want to, or you can't take it and sell it at BookCon because they own it. And again, all of this, this isn't like something that I have experienced. This is just things that I have heard. So each traditionally published author is going to have a different experience with their contract and what the contract allows them to do and what it prohibits them from doing. But again, for me personally, I do not like being told what to do. It's why I don't have a boss. It's why I'm my own boss. It's uh, one of the major reasons why I decided to self-publish because ain't nobody gonna tell me what I can and cannot do. Mm. Oh, it's so good. All right, the eighth and final pro that I have for being a self-published author is a little bit of an interesting one and it's one that I've been doing a bit of research on lately. And that is that there have been studies and research that has shown that self-published authors can sometimes prove to be much happier and more content than traditionally published authors. And of course, this is not for everybody. This isn't like across the board, self-publishers are happier. That's, that's not really what I'm talking about here, but a majority of self-publishers feel very content with their work and where they are in like their business, if that's what they're going for. And based on what I have read and what I have heard, some of this comes from the fact that when you are a traditionally published author, number one, you have to go through a lot of rejection and a lot of negativity before that book ends up on shelves. And each of us is going to have our fair share of negative reviews, negative comments on our videos, or you know, mean tweets sent to us, or whatever it is. We're all going to face some of that, you know, being online and putting ourselves out there. But when it comes to traditionally publishing, you know, you have to get rejections from agents over and over and over again. And then you have to get rejected by the editors, maybe. Maybe you're getting rejected by the publishing houses. Like, there is always somebody telling you no. And I certainly think that that can make it way more exciting when somebody does finally say yes. But I think that can also kind of, you know, batter you a little bit. That can kind of beat you up and toss you down when all you're hearing is no, not for me, not good enough don't like the voice, don't like the character, etc, etc. And when it comes to self-publishing, that's all up to you and nobody is telling you, no, you can't publish this, no, this character isn't good enough, no, I don't like the voice here, because it doesn't matter. It's your story and you can tell it the way you want to. And then another thing that might lead to discontent for traditionally published authors is that you're constantly playing the waiting game, waiting to hear back from everybody. You send out 20 queries and you're waiting for four months to hear back from agents. And then maybe if you get some interest and you send out a full or a partial, you're waiting again. And then you're waiting to hear from editors and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and checking the email, checking the phone, trying to see if anybody's contacting you. But when it comes to self-pub, you don't have to really wait on anybody else unless you are outsourcing things like cover design, edits, stuff like that, you will have a bit of wait time, which is to be expected because people have to take time to create good polished work, of course. But that's also a difference between the, you know, contentment of a self-published author not having to wait to hear back and potentially the discontent of a traditionally published author that is constantly waiting to hear back from the higher ups, I guess you could say. Okay, everybody, so those were my pros and cons to self-publishing. I would love to know what some of your pros and cons are. If you've been doing your research and you have thoughts that differ from my own, please feel free to share them in the comments down below. I love when we get really good conversation going down in the comments, and I especially love when I see you guys interacting with one another. It just really seems to bring the community together when we can all talk and share our ideas like that. So again, please, if you can think of any more pros that I didn't cover, or any cons that I didn't cover, let us know down below so that we can all learn from you and learn from each other and that would be wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, it means so much to me that you choose to spend some of your day listening to me chat. Um, let me know also if you are kind of going back and forth between self-publishing, traditional publishing, 
Let me know which one you think you're going to choose or if you've already made a decision, let me know which one you chose and why. Because it was a super difficult decision for me. I went back and forth over the course of like a year when I knew I was wrapping up Song of the Dryad and wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So I flip flopped constantly and now I am firmly flopped into self publishing. So that's what I'm doing. I'm extremely happy about it. And I'd like to know what you are doing and why you chose that publication path. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching me today. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.